Well, it's certainly been a week in gaming, with Tokyo Game Show now starting to come to a close here soon. Looking back at the week, it was actually pretty good. I mean, I typically go into Tokyo Game Show with lowered expectations when it comes to, like, a big-time reveal and announcement, but I think for the most part with what we saw here through updates for current games and a couple of new ones getting thrown out there, I think it was a lot of fun, and what I thought I would do here is because I looked up and down the schedule that they had, and there, there's a lot of shows, I kind of picked different shows, and essentially, I cleared my mind, looked at the show, and then the first game that came to my mind I wrote down here, so I thought we would do that with for each one, and you can tell me, I guess, what comes to your mind down in the comments, or what was your favorite announcement at Tokyo Game Show. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton, and if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Now, we had a Nintendo Direct and a Sony State of Play on the same day, and both of them clearly designed for Tokyo Game Show, like the audience that would be checking like the this week of announcements out. And in that case, I went with the Nintendo Direct and State of Play just being part of Tokyo Game Show. I know neither company was technically there in attendance, but still it, it was kind of in proximity enough for me to just kind of lump it in with, with the entirety of Tokyo Game Show. So let's start with the Nintendo Direct. The game that I wrote down was GoldenEye. I know there were things like Pikmin 4 and stuff there. I'm not like a massive Pikmin fan, so it didn't necessarily stick out to me immediately, but the historical nature of this announcement for GoldenEye was enough for me to immediately go, oh, GoldenEye, duh. It's, it's, it, it was finally announced after decades now of talk, speculation, leaks. It's actually happening on the Switch, and on the Xbox. So even that on its own is a big deal. The fact that there was some middle ground that was found between all these different companies and rights holder, which includes Nintendo, who is uh, pretty difficult, I'll say, to work with at least some of the history around even this title. So the fact that that's happening has online play with Nintendo, but not with the Xbox. That was something else that kind of confused all of us still. So, hey, you know what? It, that, to me, just kind of stuck out there. Then we had Sony's State of Play. I put down Rise of the Ronin. It's not out till 2024, but I, I really like these samurai games. I, I think they're a lot of fun. They're very interesting. And this looks, I mean, it, it still kind of looks like a more over-the-top action, uh, faster-paced Ghost of Tsushima. And I'm telling you, uh, like, a much younger me would love kind of this direction we're going in with these titles, because there were actually quite a few of, like, these samurai-style games that were at Tokyo Game Show. And back in the early days of the PS2, I loved playing Way of the Samurai. That's one of, like, the, the originals back then for kind of these narrative-driven uh, samurai experiences. They kind of went away for a while. Way of the Samurai still stuck around, and they did actually quite a few games in that series. But to see how many of these kind of games we're getting now going forward, for me anyway, is very exciting. I think that game looks awesome. And it's unfortunately, it's going to be a little while before it comes out. But from what they showed us there, I'm on board with that one. Then I, for the Xbox show, all right, we, I put down Deathloop, which, I mean, it's been out for a while. I've played it. I've beaten it on the PlayStation. But it was funny because the thing I complained about with Deathloop a lot was the ending. Like, I complained about it on several podcasts before, and and now they're doing this update that you can just get when it, I guess, when it drops into PlayStation Plus and on Xbox Game Pass uh, on, on the 20th that will give you an extended ending. So, apparently, it wasn't just me who noticed that the ending wasn't great for it, but there you go. Apparently, there's going to be a different ending to it now, which I guess I can go back, update mine, and then run through the, the day in one shot and see what the ending is exactly now. Uh, I hopefully it's extended enough to for to, to warrant that change and to go back to that game. But I thought Deathloop was pretty good. Capcom show, Mega Man Battle Network. I I know it's weird because Street Fighter VI was there with some pretty cool features that were revealed, some new characters. I'm not a big fighting game guy, so while it's really cool and I I understand Street Fighter is a big deal, Mega Man Battle Network has had more work done to it than I was expecting. I kind of thought they would have just put this stuff on a cartridge or a disc and just put it out there. I mean, like, there's plenty of value here. There's a bunch of games, and they're all 
fairly long games. I mean, they're essentially RPGs, right, in nature. But no, there's going to be online play and chip trading through the internet. It's, that actually would take some work to go in and do. So I, I'm kind of beyond the idea of this just being, oh, they're, they're dumping ROMs onto a, a game cartridge and pushing it out the door. Even like the main menu has a, a 3D Mega Man that will guide you around. So I, I'm pretty excited for this Mega Man Battle Network collection to come out again next year. Hopefully it's earlier next year because it has been a while since I've played any of the Game Boy Advanced Mega Man Battle Network games. And I, I'll admit, I got the urge to go back and try one of them after the announcement, but I said, no, I'm going to hold off and I'm going to dive in when this one releases specifically. Next up, we had Konami. And I feel like most people are just going to say Sweek It In 1 and 2 Remaster because I don't think there was a lot of other stuff there of, of note that you're going to say, oh, definitely that game. Sweek It In 1 and 2, I mean, that is a big deal. It We've seen the trademarks. We've talked about them in Newswave as they had kind of appeared around the world with Konami definitely making a move towards this release. It being announced is good. I mean, the fact that it's a game and not a pachinko machine is like an automatic win. I know I would have liked to have been saying Metal Gear Solid HD, Remake, uh, Silent Hill, any of that stuff. But I, it seems like, at least for now, those games are going to happen sometime in the future, just not here at Tokyo Game Show. I kind of think with the talks around the Silent Hill stuff, that might be something that Sony is going to announce at their event and have the marketing on it. And Tokyo Game Show probably just didn't make a ton of sense for them to reveal it there. It just seems like Konami kind of showed up, wasted some time, and then showed off Suikoden 1 and 2. Which, hey, Suikoden fans are probably really excited for this. I have not been a big Suikoden person at all. I played the first one when I would test original PlayStations at the old store because we had a store memory card. And I would just pop it in and you get like like half an hour to test a system or something, right? Maybe a little longer just to test it better, more, right? Uh, but I would play it. I'd save the memory card. And I think I actually got like four or five hours in just doing that method. Two was always really expensive. Even before like the retro scene exploded, uh, it was still like over $100. So I didn't really get into either of them that much, but I've heard good things about it. And yeah, I'll probably check it out when the remaster releases. They also mentioned they want to do more Suikoden games or new ones. So I kind of think they're testing the waters with this remaster. So hey, Suikoden fans out there, you want to want to make sure they, they hear you on this one when it releases. Square Enix, they did show off a couple of games, but I put down... Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion, because they showed off, like, just outright gameplay. They, they essentially sat down and played it, and it looks great. Like, this is, I, I can't believe we're in we're in this timeline right now where they are actually doing something with Crisis Core. It, it's it's mind-blowing stuff, but Final, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion, it is making it out this year midway through December, so I'm completely on board with it. The one thing I'm frustrated with is they said it's coming out winter uh, it's actually releasing before December 20th, so that's before winter. So, you know, thanks Square for lying. Then we had Bandai Namco. Put down Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Season 2 and a PS5 and Xbox Series upgrade. Now, the upgrade path is going to be free for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which is fine. The only issue is, we're going into Season 2 of DLC. Sounds like it's going to last throughout 2023. If you're familiar with how Bandai does this stuff, they're still supporting uh, Xenoverse 2, which is just, I I would have, ho I was hoping they may have talked about the future of Dragon Ball Z in terms of games, like, coming up, like, new ones. Now, I think they're going to be on this Dragon Ball Kakarot stuff for a little while, which is fine. I was okay with the game when I played through it. For what it was, I said, all right, it's it's a Dragon Ball game. It's different than Xenoverse or, or, or Budokai or Tenkaichi, any of those games, right? But I was hoping that was going to build to uh, an even better, like, single-player Dragon Ball Z experience. But they're just kind of building on top of this as they go forward. It looks like Bardock is up first with this DLC pack. And he's going to be battling against Frieza to attempt to save Planet Vegeta. Obviously, he doesn't. So I'm curious if they will follow his path uh, where he eventually runs into Chilled and has to fight uh, uh, them and transform in a Super Saiyan. I assume they're going to follow their story all the way through. So, I mean, for Dragon Ball Z fans who are enjoying Kakarot, I guess it's good to see 
more support for it. The Xbox Series and the PS5 version, they mentioned 60 FPS, and they tried to show off the graphical differences. And when I saw it, it was like in a... it was in a, a horribly compressed Twitter video, so it's it's probably not going to get across the message to me. I, I'd probably have to see it for myself. Fortunately, it's a free upgrade, so maybe I'll turn the game on when they do that and just see how it looks. And the last show I put down was for Sega, and I think most people are going to say, Like a Dragon 8. I, I put down Sonic Frontiers. The Like a Dragon stuff, for some reason in my mind, I know it's Sega doesn't register me and register to me initially as a Sega property even though it is it just I think of RGG first and then oh yes yeah, Sega as well uh, so I put down Sonic Frontiers it looks better every time they show it they now have the the theme music playing in the background as the actions happening on screen so it's at least coming together here at the end and I'm basically in the Sonic cycle right now but I think it's actually gonna work out this time because our bar currently is better than Sonic Forces. The only way this game is not better than Sonic Forces is if it explodes your system immediately when you put the disc in or the download completes. It's possible. I'm not, I'm not putting anything by Sega right now with these 3D Sonic games, but the latest trailer looked better with the, the story elements and stuff added in, and those set pieces are, are at least looking higher quality. They showed Super Sonic, so uh, pretty cool. I guess we'll be able to fly around as the, the golden Sonic throughout the world and stuff or in some of these different boss battles. And Sakurai played it, gave it his, a stamp of approval. Are, are you going to argue with Sakurai? Because I'm not. And as I'm wrapping up this video, I do want to remind you of a couple of things you can download and try out right now. Several demos were releasing throughout TGS, and there are some we can look forward to here in the coming days. I know at least one. But Wolong Fallen Dynasty, there is a demo that released, and the game is good. Like, I'm playing through it. I spent like 30 or 40 minutes just kind of messing around with it to see how it felt. It is... A faster Neo is the best way I can kind of describe it initially with some of the early impressions on it. And they have like this like this morale system where you have a temporary level and you want to build that up as you go. And if you plant like these flags, your, your base level from maybe when you spawn, if you die, will just be up a bit. So like you may plant enough flags and you'll always be at a seven for your morale system. And then you're able to raise it as you defeat other enemies to match maybe the, the uh, boss that's level 20 with their morale system. And then of course you can level up your different abilities. You get weapons and it's a pretty fun game so far with this demo. So check that one out. Uh, Harvestella, the demo released on the Switch, I downloaded it. I have not had a chance to play it yet. I think I'm going to check it out later on today before the spawn cast so I can at least talk somewhat about it if it comes up. And then Valkyrie Elysium, that demo is out. I did play that. This is the first chapter, and it will have your save data carry over. So uh, I've played a bit of it. It's interesting that the character and some of the story they're trying to tell right now not that interesting. The combat is fine. It's an action uh, RPG. And they have like these summons that you kind of throw out into battle to fight enemies alongside of you. The enemies have different weak points, so I'm sure that'll play into things as you get further into the game. But definitely check out any of these three. And then we have Star Ocean. That is on the 20th. They will have a demo. It's going to be about two hours long. And I am crossing my fingers that Star Ocean is at least a mid-tier RPG. Seriously, I have a low bar for Star Ocean after what they've done recently. So if they can just get back to being a, a decent JRPG. I mean, people talk about Metacritic scores. If this can be mid to high 70s, I will absolutely consider that a win for Tri-Ace. But that's Tokyo Game Show, or at least the different shows that I wrote down here with some of the announcements that first came to my mind for each one. And let me know what your favorite announcement was at Tokyo Game Show down below in the comments because... I think it was a pretty fun week for gaming. There was news flying all over the place, gameplay everywhere, demos dropping out of nowhere. So exciting stuff there. But like I said, let me know what you guys thought about the event overall. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.